Welcome to Windows on the World. This is our special Friday night out, even though you're probably in. But we did one on Monday and it was great. So we're going to carry on. People seem to like it. And these are addendums to the shows. They're nothing serious, but we'll get into some serious stuff. Got a great guest tonight, Steve Hughes, Australian comedian, who actually got stranded just before lockdown started with the COVID thing. So he was really lucky he didn't have to go back to Australia. I'm going to bring Steve in straight away. Hello, yeah. Steve. That was a brief intro, really brief yeah. intro. <laughs> <laughs> I was just yeah. telling them that you got stranded in England due to COVID. Yeah, got stranded in paradise. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then you ended up in Glastonbury, though, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I went in, yeah, yeah. I went to Glastonbury to sleep on a, a couch for a week. and uh, you know, That's what everyone does in Glastonbury. Eat rye bread. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Did you go to the Goddess Temple? No, they wouldn't let me in, mate. They, no, uh, no, I went down. After, when, I, when I heard about it, you know, I was thrilled. I thought, Goddess Temple, Isis, Ishtar, you know, Hikati, Succubus, if you're lucky, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean <laughs> well, it's Friday night in it, you know. The old <laughs> Friday night, we're in our 50s. Let's go mental, eh? That's very <laughs> nice of you, Steve. I'm 60, I am, you know. All right, bit of Glastonbury <laughs> Succubus action. <laughs> so I went down to the goddess temple. I thought this sounds great, you know. I'll um I'll do a little prayer to the north, south, west, and east and um see what's around. You know, there must be some um fantastic looking Amazonian women in there. So I got there, it was all locked up, you know, it looked like it was locked up. Got the window, I looked in and I thought, fuck <laughs> goddesses, no, pigs in knickers doing yoga, you know. Yeah. Well, let's start as we mean to carry on. So yeah. Goddesses. I was, I'm yeah. already a goddess, you know. I didn't have to go into the pool. We weren't talking about you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody's just put into chat actually earlier before this started. They said, well, it's great that Steve's still around because he must have got kind of sort of out, out, you know, outed by the uh, hate mongers, you know. Is that what happened to you in several uh... venues or not? Not really. Yes and no. no. You yeah. know, my first DVD was what, 12, 13 years ago? What was that called? While it's still legal. You know? Yeah. So eventually they were going to get upset if anybody went up, you know, uh, outside the lines, you know, if anybody drew yeah. out the, you know. And so, and so, you know, I was. Th- 2010, I finished on the, I, I did 10 years on the English comedy circuit, you know, the club circuit. Mm. Yeah. Well, you're doing 20 minute spots, you know, and then you do Edinburgh festivals and do hour shows. But I always figured I wanted to do hour shows. That's what comedy was to me, you know, like, yes, until I grew up watching Richard Pryor and, you know, listen to Woody Allen and, and, and Eddie Murphy, you know, so, and like yeah. bands, I always figured that's what a show is, isn't it? You know, Pink Floyd. Yeah. Band. I mean, those old comedians, funny enough, I, I just watched a few the other day because it's almost like they're out of another dimension now. <laughs> and I watched, I watched, uh, I never liked him that much, but I watched Bob Monkhouse and it, his, his act was very risque, actually. Mate. And he had an amazing memory, though. Oh, his jokes, because he didn't really do stand up, he did jokes, you know. Yeah, well, we've been listening to Bernard Manning. Right. <laughs> oh, Bernard, Bernard. <laughs> Bernard's the best. <laughs> Bernard's the best. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't, I don't think I'm pretty, I'm, 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 I'm totally ousted on the con but as i was going back i was i was yeah. you know 2010 i went back to australia for a year and made a music album and i was tired of the comedy circuit you know I, yeah just going to a town and doing clubs and staying in hotels and because i wanted to do shows you know yes so then i went to tour with reg hunter for about two years and then i started doing my own tours around the uk and then 2014 decided to have a bit of a breakdown and have to go and deal with that for half a decade and then, uh, so I've never been uh, interested in coming back to do. I was coming back here to do like three, six months of touring, you know, tour shows, not yeah. clubs. Yeah. And yeah. You, you do a club if you want a couple of hundred quid. Yes. It's easy yeah. to get to, but, you know. But then I came here and did the tour show and then <laughs> <laughs> they got upset. <laughs> So, they got. They decided to be offended. Did they? Yeah. they decided yeah. to be offended, right? Yeah. And uh, so it kind of got around. It gets around. Well, you know, they don't want to take. Even though in a twenty-minute club set, I'm not going to do my my hardcore material because it's you know you got twenty minutes. Yeah. yeah. 
no one's come to see it. It's Saturday night. They don't know who they're seeing. They're drinking their wine and, you, you know, what am I going to do? Get into hardcore? Yeah. Talk like the- about stuff, you know what I mean? You, you, you know, you, need to, you, know, you use 20 minutes to sort of muck around, you know. So, 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 but still it gets around that, you know, we don't know if we can trust this fella anymore. So it's probably around some of the comedy circuit that it's best if we, best if we don't take the chance. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Well, this is it. You see, it's the precautionary principle. You see, <laughs> and um, I've had that as well, you know, because they they've actually banned my talks before I even talked. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't after; it was before. So, like we we did a something down in Worthy, and the venue accepted it. And it was a Quakers friends, oh, for, ironically, friends meeting house. You know, you wouldn't think it'd be full of hate, would you? But um, they turn around. They, oh, they're talking about climate change, you know, and all that, and they they banned us from the venue. It happened several times, you know. So I realised that you can't you can't say anything really. Well, yeah, you know, you have to, you have to get around it. Yeah, it, it, it's if you look at the funny part, it's it's mm. you're not even allowed to voice observed reality. Of course not. Yeah. No, I mean it's, it's post truth <laughs> yeah, yeah, world. Yeah, so I mean, it's, like... yeah, yes. I mean the thing is that it's all about feelings anyway. So people say, "I'm sorry, you feel that um, that I've offended you," you know. And that's we can use that back, you see, because it's all about oh, feelings. You know. Reloaded, updated. Sorry, the, the video went. Yeah, that's all right. It's okay. I can I can ramble on on my own for ages. I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been walking through the mountains all day. Been wonderful. Well, you know, it's a soul. We can sit here and rant about this stuff again, but we all know this is just the symptom of the of the. Uh, you know, it's it's it's. It's like I said, my first DVD, while it's still legal, why? Because eventually, you know, it was a red flag to me, God knows how many years ago, as soon as they wanted to put a, the word offence and put a law yeah. next to it, you know, that was just a red flag for everyone, wasn't it? Like, yeah. what are you talking about? This is just so, I'm I'm not, I'm not a big, deep intellectual, th- I, I, it's very simple to me. It's like obvious, you can't put an objective law around a subjective experience that's guided by your conditioning is it right no but it's it's not really about reality as you said i mean that's the thing you see i mean i go there armed with a a busload of facts and documentation but that doesn't really count when it's hate speak you see and that is the problem i mean that i was really amazed you know how intolerant it was because i was really talking about what was coming in which was all documented and it was all fact so a few days before they'd just venues that pull the shows you know the talks they well, just pull them it's, it's, it's almost like so you can go and get the facts like you did mm. and you could probably just go to the, the website of specific mm. things and they'll tell you but but they they i get i guess they guarantee that mo, uh, bank on the fact that most people won't go there right? no well that's that's absolutely so right when I mean, someone comes out yeah. like you and starts actually pointing it out they go hang on hang on no we, we we will tell you over here right well, yes, right. When like, conspiracy theory, though. Yeah, yeah, right. So we'll call him a conspiracy theorist, even though over yeah. here on the website is exactly where this guy got the information from, right? Which we'll tell you yeah. here, but we know you won't come here, really. Yeah, you know. And if anybody does come here and brings the information out, then we'll have to. <laughs> we'll have to, uh, you know, sleep. Exactly. One of the, the I mean, it, it's like the funniest one was someone's. They posted a a leaflet through every letterbox in Fairbourne because I'm going to tell them the good news that they didn't have to move out because of climate change, because of the sea level rise, you see. And I had the world's leading expert in sea levels, Niels Axel Morner, who worked for the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and resigned with a resignation letter. And then I went down there and they'd put a, a sort of leaflet through every letterbox in the village. And they'd said that Mark Windows is a conspiracy theorist and that Niels Axel Mourner was a Swede who just thinks he's got supernatural powers. This is the world's leading expert in sea levels, you know. And then the, basically the local MP joined in and he said, he said, quite frankly, Mark Windows' conspiracy theories are about as likely as alien remains being found at Roswell, which of course they bloody were, you know. <laughs> so it was, the worst, it was the worst kind of logical fallacy you could come up with. But yeah, you're up against it all the time. But I suppose it's... Um, it's difficult because you get an audience, and this is what I wanted to talk to you about, really. You build up a sort of loyal audience of people who like you. And that seems to be the best way of doing it now. What do you think? Oh, yeah, because because mm. 
you you get to the point now where you just realize well well it doesn't as you said you've experienced you can bring facts and stuff to people well but it, but it doesn't matter mm-hmm. right so so now the big i guess the frustrating part for people who are who have been looking into stuff throughout the years is that is that the last two or three years you really got the experience of my goodness even with even with something that seems so fucking obvious that people won't see it it was it was it was a strange thing wasn't it it was like it was like the world disconnected into this into people yeah. who can like like because it's just common sense. I'm, I, I can't bring up facts and stats and everything for everyone, but it's just like, so suddenly you go, right, there's a big virus from someone that ate a bat, right? And all the countries in the world have decided to join in and shut down their economies because a Chinese guy had some bat. <laughs> right, it's, it's, it's so Well, yeah, but the, the cover so story ridiculous. doesn't have now, to be any good, big, Steve. Now, the cover story doesn't have to be any good. No, no. The, no, the, no, no, the cover no, story is pretty much always crap. This is I what mean, the, the COVID thing. thing is, so it's so dreadful, ludicrous. Really. That you sit there and then you go, and, and now it's it's going around the world. You, none of you can see it. And you, you, we, and within less than a year, we whipped up uh, some medicine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what a coincidence. It was, all, it was already <laughs> like, sorted it's, out. It was fantastic, that, wasn't it? Yeah. You've yeah. been asking me to send your money for 50 years, so your tens of thousands of advanced medical scientists around the world can finally find the cure for cancer and in the 56 years you've been asking me that on tv you've come up with nothing and yet in less than a year the mystery well, i mean the mystery illness you've never looked at at all before that came out of a guy having bat for lunch uh you, you've solved and well they now, always do that even though I mean, when you get on a plane yeah. you can't eat a peanut because someone up the back's got a peanut allergy because apparently not everybody's the same mm-hmm. in fact you you make laws that now you can't even have a nut around someone with a peanut allergy yeah. but you should all take this medicine we made because you're all the same yeah well what, the what thing is that when that came out i mean it was astonishing really how quickly people got into line and when it started, 11th of March, 2020, that was it. I knew we were off. I knew there was a big ride starting because <laughs> it was like, right, open the gates. We're going to have the bloody lot now. So I've been talking about it for so long. And I knew all the background, Peter Dazak, Eco Health Alliance. You can read all this stuff. And behind it, it's very creepy and sinister. But in actual fact, the execution of it is always crap now. And it has been for ages, it's, you know. Well, you know, it's, it's, it seems to be, there seems from our from our observations, it seems that it doesn't matter if it's crap. No, it doesn't, because people seem to believe it. And this is what I could never get over. But, of course, it's the new system. And facts do not matter in the post-truth world. And you've got a couple of generations of people now who actually adhere to that. You can give them as many facts as you want. They close their ears. When the change agents started coming into Walthamstow about 2014, a woman turned up, as they do, took over everything locally who we'd never seen before. And she walks in. She started going on about climate change. So I gave her some facts. And she said, I choose not to hear that. (laughs) And it's like, what? <laughs> Look, the audacity is what knocks people over, you see, because they can't believe that they're being gaslighted like that. It's funny that they it's can't say, I choose not to hear that when they decide to get offended at a joke. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> exactly. But it doesn't work both ways, Steve. You should know by now. It doesn't work both ways. You no, know? it doesn't work both ways. It doesn't work both ways. <laughs> mm-hmm. but, I mean, it's creepy as sinister as it is. You've got to laugh at it. You've got to go, All right, because, you know. Definitely. What are you going to do? Bat- We've already proven that battery- trying to batter people over the head with stuff's not going to work. It's not going to- Maybe it's not anyone's job to wake these people up. Maybe they've got another role to not wake up. I don't know. Well, I think that's, uh, there's a fork wake in the up. road. And, it's yeah. a kind of craps expression, but you know what I mean? It sense. is really, because a lot of the people who think they're awake are uh, they're worse than the ones who aren't, you know. Oh, mate, we've we're, got- all, we're, all, we're all still yeah. got our stuff. We've all still got yeah. our programs and our things in there, you know, like – as you said before, it's like you were watching some uh, uh, the comedian you mentioned. It was like from another 
hear a lot of times. Oh, Monkhouse, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it is. I sometimes just listen. You listen to an old record from Pink Floyd or something, or so. And, and it's like it's like it is. It's like another. It's a world that doesn't exist anymore. You know? That's right. That's right. Like, and it's happened really quick, hasn't it? Yeah, really quick. You know, right? it, it happens really quick. Yeah, because. I mean, I made a film years ago about these old variety artists, and it wasn't that long ago. It was a club I used to go to in London called the Concert Artists Association or the Club for Acts and Actors, which was set up in 1924 by the Rank Organisation. And Jack Warner, who played Dixon of Doc Green, was the first patron, right? And I made this film in it. It had Barry Cryer in it. It had John Inman. It had Avril Angers, the first woman comedian on the radio. It had all these... They're all dead now. But you look at it now... And it looks like something from at least 200 years ago, you know. <laughs> and it was only about 15 years or something. Yeah. Well, it is funny. Like, you can watch reaction videos on YouTube, you know, young people listening to mm. what is now old music. Mm. And I can see some of them, the ones that, like, they, they, they suddenly realise they they, it's, like, it's like they're hearing real stuff. Yes. You know what I mean? Because they've they've just been brought up with Kylie Minogue and corporate pop stars and stuff, and, and three mm. high tech movies, and yeah, and, and, and they just had phones their whole lives. You know, yeah. I see I saw these three young girls in Scotland sitting at a bus stop, obviously friends, you know, sixteen or something, and they're all on their phones sitting with each other at the bus. Mm. Like who who would sit at a bus stop with your mates at sixteen and want to be on a phone? Like, yeah, well, but, that's uh, another that's... thing I noticed actually, because I used to do gigs. I used to do a lot of gigs, and it was um, a sort of music act, really. You know, well, my agent disagreed, but <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it was actually. It was a, it was very popular, but it's very in your face, you know. And it relied on me. What once I put that tiger skin suit on, there was no going back. You know, you couldn't just stand in the corner. You'd have to go out full attack, you know. And then um, they 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 sit there. And they'd film you like this. <laughs> and then they'd spend the rest of the gig looking at you on the phone. And they just wouldn't join in, you know. And I knew that was the end of it, really. Sad. It is strange yeah. that you would, you would go to film a concert so you could go home yeah. and look at the thing you didn't experience. That's right. Yeah, because they, <laughs> they don't experience it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. And the funny thing is, is they probably won't look at it anyway. So you've got this strange disconnect isn't it? it's almost like in, i read once uh, some interview from some guy who was like a gunner in a in a or no a, a guy that filmed war like you know, so yeah. you see this footage of guys running around well there's some bloke carried a camera filled with this shit right and some guy who used mm -hmm. to do that he said he goes yeah sometimes the whole fear of what where you are disappears yeah well i think with a cameraman it's different yeah. thing, so it becomes like a fake reality right well, it's, right. it, it becomes that you want to get that shot. It's, uh, I, 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 as someone who's worked behind cameras, it is you, you do disconnect from everything because you, you're just obsessed with it. Yeah. And, and, and I can see how they get shot now because you just think, oh, that looks great. You know, <laughs> I've just got, it's not quite in the middle, though. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. You know, but the point being, yeah. you know, they, they, you can create this. So they're now watching a band who've turned up on a plane and stayed in a hotel and carried there and got to the gig. And now you're not going to experience it. You're going to yeah. sit there with this thing, you know, and it's, 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 it's very strange. You know, it's a weird disconnect that they, we had a thing where we grew up. So they had metal punk bands that were so underground, you know, the whole thing, all mm. the, I, I, I don't have any of it archived really. Cause there was, everything was so in the moment, you know, it was so just there happening immediate exactly and immediate and you know what Steve? experience yeah. you know I, I don't know it's maybe it's just because i really as you get older i suppose I, you think of things in a different way every day now to me is like my last day on earth you know i bloody love it it's fantastic <laughs> you know and, it, and it, it's it's just a, a, a kind of urgency because i've known all this stuff for so long i'm kind of buzzing on it in a way do you know what I mean? It's like it's like people. Are, oh, that sounds really bloody depressing. I thought, no, it's you have to know about it. It's great, <laughs> <laughs> and they don't agree at all. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we discovered at the beginning of this conversation, the last two years, many people don't. 
well, you know, who knows? I don't know what people are thinking. See, I'm, I'm kind of disconnected. I, I don't have a, a wife or children or anything, or I'm not at a workplace, so I'm not on the front line of what people have to experience. So when people go, oh, my work friends all alienated me or did this and people have been hassling me to get the thing and not get the thing and do the right. See, I haven't experienced any of that because all the people I know that I'm around are like that and so i do feel it must be difficult for those people to what well what is, yeah what i mean like being a family where you're the only one that thinks differently in the whole you know if you're close to your family and so forth it must be a strange yeah. experience for them what, what kind of disconnects that like, like yeah but i think it's all about it comes down to at the end of the day maturity and individual choice and I, i'm just astonished really about people that i used to know i mean I don't know whether you found this, but because I used to know a lot of people in show business, you know, and it was it was my life for a long time. I was touring in a van for 25 years. You know, that's what I did. It wasn't it wasn't to be famous. It was to earn a living and give me time to look into things I wanted to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's it is very strange because I mean, I think you said this on another interview. I watched a bit of a few interviews of yours before I got you on the show. And um, yeah, you were saying that that basically you know, people, people's expectations are completely different. You know, I mean, it, now people have no rebellious spirit at all, do they? The kids are terrible, I think. Most of them, you know. Well, they, they, they're not, they've not they, no they, sense of adventure. They've been given a sort of a, they've been given a manufactured rebellion. Yeah, of course. Course. You know, so 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 now they have like a corporate rebellion, which is you know I call them psychological foot soldiers. You know, so yeah, so so what you've done is you've just you've just programmed the minds of people in the countries you wish to bring down internally. Yeah, and what's so the revolutionary have, spirit? Yeah, so the almost rev- like yeah. almost like that. Uh, that that when they snuck that Trojan horse in, that's the way I describe it. That old story mm-hmm. in the the Greek infiltration. Sort of Waited till night time and then all snuck sure. out, and hacked them to bits. Well, now they've so they've kind of done that psychologically, haven't they? Yeah, so, absolutely. You know, that's right. exactly what it is. Good analogy. Good analogy because that's what it is. Open infiltration. Yeah, and yeah. Demos, the government think tank, Demos. They said the new democracy. You see, the new democracy will work with a combination of government open infiltration and citizens groups taking direct action. That's where your rebellion comes in. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't so, matter whether it's pro climate change with the extinction rebellion or anti climate change with your stand in the parks. It's all being taken care of for you. Here's your yeah. banner. Go and protest, then go home. Well, they, because they we've got you, stuff to do. They tell you on the train. See it. Say it. Sorted. Oh yeah, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Every sort. Every five seconds. <laughs> every five minutes or so on the train. Every station you have to see it. Say it, sort it. Don't worry do about st- it. Do they still do that? Oh, mate, it's constant. Every train station across the UK, every train, every. If you see anything suspicious, then text the British Transport Police on one one six one one bar bra bra bra. See it, say it, sort it. <laughs> sorted. <laughs> <laughs> fucking sorted, mate. You know, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've, we've yeah. got to we've got to get the vernacular in. You know, yeah, I, yeah. Sorted. It's so funny, especially when it's done in that posh woman's accent on the train. Sorted. She's got a wonderful voice. These people, unless it's an AI, who can tell? But it, it, but she, it's probably uh, her voice is perfect. This next stop, Ipswich. This oh, is yeah. the seventeen oh five to uh, Norwich. With, but if you say anything fucking suspicious. Well, watch out! Yeah, that's that's right. but, but 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 while while you enjoy your muffin and, and meal deal from the kiosk, right? Sit back, relax, and enjoy the trip of your muffin. But make sure you're vigilant to watch out for the suspicious activities. But yeah, you do, but if you do see any, just report it, and it'd be fucking sorted. All right? That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But they used to the train drivers used to make really good announcements. You know, when you could hear them, they used to go. Right, lovely people, all the way to Wolfham Star. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And you just don't hear that now. It's quite funny, really. No. But then, yeah, the the the, uh, the station announcement. You only really got it at Mind the Gap before, didn't you? Before terrorism, errorism. <laughs> before the errorism started, it was only Mind the Gap, Mind the Gap. Now it's uh, see, it's eight sorted. Yeah, 
Now it's now it's yeah. You got you got to you got to text the British Transport Police. They'll be on it, mate. They'll be on it like Batman. <laughs> That's you know? right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, from the depot in Caledonian Road. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. British transport. They'll jump in their rainbow-coloured car. Right, it's such a clear one. <laughs> Think about it. The, 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 the car will be covered in rainbow fucking gay flags, and then they'll they'll drive down. They'll let they'll leave. There'll be all forty of them because they have to have forty of them now. Yeah. You know. And so, well, they uh, do actually carry semi-automatic weapons. You know. Yeah. Well, they've like got Hague Street Station. Dealers. They've got people well, they in are. there. They've got people in their living rooms in Hull saying things like, you know, perhaps England can't hold any more immigrants. Would that be a point I could bring up? Racist! Oh, that's <laughs> well, that's it now. That's eight speak. That is. That's, uh, that's the online harms bill coming in straight then, then away. The, then the siren starts and the rainbow car starts up. The, <laughs> the rainbow, rainbow drives down the road. That's right. Com comes around your house to get you for hate speech. Right? Yeah. Well, as scary as it is, it's 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 been it's been. It's it's old school, just you know what they've done it in a million East Bloc countries and so forth throughout the world, but now they've just covered it in rainbows and flags and Domino's delivery pizzas on the way. Right? All... Well, yeah, I mean a lot of them are sponsored by private companies, aren't they? It's like working in partnership with, I mean, you know. So you see yeah. these vans now, don't you? With working in partnership with Waltham Forest Council or something. You see it all the you time, know. and they're all chemists. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, Boots is working in partnership with so forth. I saw a, you know, you know, they dig up the roads everywhere for the agenda 2030. You can't drive your car anywhere stuff, right? So, that, so then they put the fake traffic lights there on one of these ugly stands. And I looked mm -hmm. at one of them the other day and it says, you know, Cycro or whatever its company's called, supporting the traffic industry. See, yeah. they just told oh, you. Yeah. Yeah. It's an industry. Yeah. Yeah. They just told you. Traffic is an industry. Yes, right. of course. Yeah. Well, it's all industry. I mean, <laughs> yeah. the whole thing is it's Not all just cars driving around on the yeah. road, right? Yeah. right. No, no, what they do is they, they appoint the people that they want in there as the change agents, as the interface with the public, you see, and they train them. So there's no actual choice going on with anything. You know, what they call local democracy. They have a local democracy reporter now, don't they? Have you noticed that? They have a local democracy report who just puts this terrible propaganda into the newspapers. You know, well, I don't, I, I don't really watch the news. Me, me and my friend here, we saw a bit of the news the other night. It was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> We're talking about the local press because the, the live group actually slandered a few of us when we went to Glastonbury. Someone made a complaint that the sea cadets had been insulted, you know. Have you lost your? Have you lost something? Yeah. <laughs> how do you how do you lose something? You drop it on the floor in front of you, and it manages to vanish. Well, it must be really important, you know. Yeah, I'm just having a look at the <laughs> yeah. topics in the conversation. It was important. It's my lighter, for God's sake, you know. Oh God, yeah. Well, you can't drop that, can you? No. But that's interesting, isn't it? Really, because everything changing so quickly, within about 15 years. Has that ever happened before, do you think? Well, maybe with mud floods and huge... <laughs> You've been in Glastonbury too long, Steve. Huge catastrophes. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a catastrophist, by the way. I'm a catastrophist. A catastrophist. I'm a catastrophist. <laughs> yeah. No, I believe that the Earth has undergone massive changes, you know, which it oh. obviously has when you look how everything's been smashed to bits from, you know, from above on a map. You can see, can't well, you? We, we were watching John Levy before, if you've watched John Levy. No, tell me more. Oh, he does the stuff which I always pondered and never. And just, you know, I was thinking about so much else in my life, and you know, it was just sat in the back of my mind. I remember I was in Brussels or something years ago, and there was this huge cathedral there, and I used to look at these cathedrals and <clears throat> just going to do. It. How are you telling me some someone in seventeen ninety one built this thing with no ladders and you know, you know they're so they're so innate, you know, ornate, you know. And so John Levy has a channel, which is basically suddenly he brought to this old thought that had nestled in the back of my head for years. He's got a whole channel where he goes around the world and goes, well, look at all these buildings that are just absolutely epic. And what are the, what are, what is 300 of them doing in Salt Lake City? Well, it is Where a very bunch of guys in covered wagons turned up with, 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 with muskets and a shovel. And you're telling me they carted in... 300 columns, did they? And built these ornate, huge antiquitech buildings that are just, it's, it's. Well, you know. Sense now. They were already here, mate. They were already here. Long, yeah. long term, long term. 
you know, you can see stuff that's been dug up all the time in Greece because over there for a few months and they're always digging stuff up there. And it just, some of it's mind boggling, but they've got a lot of megalithic stuff over there. You see all this stuff about megaliths and that, you know, the, it's, it's not that difficult to move stuff really. You know, the Romans were pretty good at it actually, but it goes way back before then, obviously. Oh yeah. But this, you know, you know this is just, it's, it's, it makes sense to me that, that, that no one built because I, I grew up in Australia where a bunch of convicts were ported out there. And now we've got big epic town halls and obelisks and. and well, well, that's all it? from the 1800s, isn't it? Yeah, no, that's what they say, but I don't believe yeah. it anymore. So, yeah, yeah from the 1700s. There's a bunch of yobbos in the 1800s who were all out there. Why did they build a castle to go, this is the post office? Oh, they, they, they went like, out there with a plan, the, Steve. They didn't just. <laughs> that's that, that car, you know, the cover story of that. Oh, we just sent up the, the prisoners there. I mean, no, they, they, they intended to colonize it and build on it, obviously, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, <laughs> the time frames don't match. Well, they get, yes, we knocked so no, this up in, in, in eight years, did you? Who well, did? a bunch of people in Utah are in covered wagons. Wait, wait, wait. It's very the, the civilization is far more advanced than a lot of people think. <coughs> has been, you know, because we're, we're actually in the end of civilization now. We're in the end of one, which is quite interesting, I think. Or well, the beginning of a new one. Yes, I hope so. You know, because that would be really good. And yeah, the end of civilization, what's going to happen? Because people have been dumbed down to an unacceptably low level, I think, now. And it, once it's unacceptably low, civilization has a problem with rising again. Because if you look at books, go back into history, go back three or 400 years, look at the level of literacy. All right, it might be written in Old English or whatever language you want to look at. But you'll find a level of literacy and expression that has been completely reduced because they've reduced the acceptable language that people use. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I mean, you can see it. But I think this, this turnabout is, 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 go, is going deeper than will we win against the villains. It's almost like uh, there could be another whole timeline through consciousness being created. Well, there's lots of different levels of ways of looking at it, you see. The thing is that if you look at it from a systems point of view, the world's run on a system, a management system. And that management system has to somehow work. So what they've done is they've convinced everybody that to save the world, they've got to give up everything. It's a lot easier to do that than go around killing them all, you see. And the other thing is that a lot of them are killing themselves. So <laughs> this is the point, that once you see it as a system, but you think, well, wait a minute, I didn't really want to be involved in that. And I, I take offence at them thinking of me as... Just cattle, you know, because I put a lot of work into this, Steve. I don't know whether you realise that. No, 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 no. I know what you mean. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I've had, uh, I had those thoughts when I was young, which is why I ended up in, in bands, you know, because mm. it was like, well, so the whole, the whole plan is I just go to work and for, until I'm 65 and then I'm supposed to get a house and then what, what am I supposed to experience in this? What, what, what? And how much are you giving me a week to the $275 to take all my time? So, and, and it's just, of course, it's a system. You know, I always thought, you know, you just, you just, I've had this joke for years, you know, when you're buying land off people, you know, I grew up around Aboriginals. No, no Aboriginals think about buying land, right? So who, who's selling you back the planet? Well, exactly. You know, but so the thing great. is that it's about caretaking the land, you see. Yeah, That's exactly. the way to think right, of it. Right? So, you, so and, and in a way, it, the system still runs on that because you can't actually own anything. You can only own a title of something because you're going to die and someone else is going to get it. Well, that's but what they, I mean. Yeah, well, they, without they, even bringing the titles and the systems uh, ways mm -hmm. in, just thinking about it as, as a human being, you're on the earth in a universe. How, who can sell you some land? Well, it's like, 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 so who took it? Well, who took it? Well, a bunch of people, someone took it, right? You know, whatever you wanted to go about, whatever your favorite conspiracy theory mob is, you know, I've been through the ringer with the Freemasons and the Jews and the banks and the, 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 the bloodline families and what is secret societies, whatever, whatever apparent gang has decided to, you know, your favorite one. Well, 
somehow they've all got together or done something or other and been managed well, they to did. They got together and they, they decided the that, yeah, into a they product. decided, that, yeah. So basically, so, so again, these system. are my very just simple observations mm. of going, okay, well, there you are. You're in a system where someone thinks that they can sell you the planet, which is ludicrous. Well, right? it's so, basically uh, very unbalanced. It's become completely unbalanced. So it can't really carry on like that. And the whole idea of what they wanted to do was take everything under an environmental project, which is what they did. Everything's been taken under an environmental project, oh, which is I, nothing I to do I, with the environment. You know, yeah, of course. Simple. Well, I know their little strategy. They're like, you know, everyone can know it. They put it on the website. <laughs> yeah, but not everybody yeah. does, you see. Not everybody takes it in because otherwise totally they wouldn't be going, well, I'm going to glue myself to the M25 to save the planet. Well, that's basically they've told you to do that because they've already taken the planet. You know, it's absolutely pathetic, really. But people are dumbing down. And I think it's very important to keep um, a kind of priestly intelligence at this point in life, even though sometimes I feel like um, maybe I'll just degenerate with the rest of them, you know, but actually but, not anymore. Yeah. But as much <laughs> as we say that people are dumbing down, we could also look at it going, well, because they've gone so they've, they've upped the pace in the last three years so much. Yeah. There's a lot of people waking up too, when you use that term again, right? It's a lot of people going, hang on, yeah. hang all on. Right. <laughs> yeah, Cause we all know the strategies that, you know, if, you, if you've got a job eight hours a day and you've got kids and, families and mortgages and fines and this well you're not going to be reading rise of the fourth reich by jim mars are you Cause, cause, well cause... he was paid off anyway yeah well, whatever I mean, you know, know what i mean you know what i mean yeah. right so, yeah. so 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 most of that's distraction steve that's just a distraction yeah, yeah. well it, but, yeah, but see you're not going to be re yeah but see you your average person watching telly and having dinner and going to soccer matches and having brunch for all oh, right yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, they wouldn't they, even get that doesn't even yeah. enter the universe no, right, right. but I, I think that's the thing. It's um, you know, I know I've told through conspiracy theory world a red fucking infiltrated fucking knowledge. Of course, you work that out if you're in that world long enough. Okay, there's mischief going on in here as well, right? But, but my point being is, if you're there, is just normal people who watch Dancing with the Stars and done. The, I'm not, but I'm not going to say they're dumb because I don't know them, right? But, but those people will start to get woken up more. Simply because their lives that they were working in that that was kind of working will get infringed upon. Well, you of know, course. I mean, you can that only put getting tighter and tighter. Yeah. Point. Now they want their whole we you can't drive out of Oxford, their 15 minute city scenarios and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. So I mean eventually I guess we have to turn it around from being involved because we could become very negative about this, but you have to start to go, okay, well. Maybe this will be a big slip up and there'll be a bunch of people who heard it who were just watching and fucking dancing with the stars and Britain's got talent will suddenly start going, hang on, hang on. What the fuck's going on over here? <laughs> right. Well, now, I think now who that... knows? Because they're also they're gonna deal with all the programs that they've got in them, which are keeping them away from mm. not you know, out of the system. And some of them are really entrenched. It's like in the matrix where he goes, we don't release some people after a certain age because the mind has trouble letting go. You know what I mean? So, so, so. Well, I think that what's happening with the with this new thing, they're actually they've actually announced that the fifteen minute cities are in and the zoning is in. You see, so now they're all kind of thinking maybe it is a lockdown. Well, it was always a lockdown. That's the whole point. So I suppose it's going to be interesting as they notice more, because the whole point is that you have to take the vehicles off people before you can lock them down. You see, you can't lock people down if they can travel. And oh, that yeah, is yeah. going to be an interesting thing because they've already got a lot of people weaponized against free transport, individual transport. They, they put all those people into these towns. They send oh, thousands of them in. But I know. It's, I'm not saying that mm. we haven't got there. Is it a war going on? You've got a, 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 mm. an, a, a highly infiltrated enemy running around you. You know what I mean? You, mm. you, we've, we've discussed this before. They wanted to whip up some flyers about Mark Windows to stick through some letterboxes. They got that done in fucking two seconds, <laughs> didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> Bloody <laughs> crap. Merry on the Labour Party. You know? Yeah. You wanted yeah. to get one done to find your like, to, to find your cat, then perhaps, well, you have to do this and we have to do that. And do oh, yeah, this. that wouldn't get anywhere. I have to speak to Brian and he's away until mm. Monday and... That, you know. Oh no! If you've got a Marxist agitation group, they can get things done overnight. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's no problem at all. No problem, no at, problem all. at all. Because that's what they thrive on. It's the revolutionary spirit. You see, 
And that's what it's all about. They've, they've, they've enabled these people to become revolutionaries and they are in their own minds. Oh, I know what you mean. That's what we were yeah. talking before, these, the, the, mm. the PC stuff. Sometimes people always go, well, you're still going on about that, Steve. Yeah, because it's, 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 it's such a massive psychological weapon that they've used on you. Of course you. it is. So that, so of course that, it is. Gaslighting yeah. 101. Could you even yeah. call it cancel culture? They haven't told you. <laughs> yeah, you can go right. around and yeah. cancel entertainment that others might find highly entertaining and excellent, but somehow it's got a moral perspective over it now. And venues use, well, he doesn't, he doesn't agree with our values. Well, what are your values? Does a venue have values now? Does it like well, like what it is, it seems to be that the the sort of ushers and these people who work backstage can now be offended and get you cancelled. Right. It's I tell you what, it's always the staff now. They just have some twenty yeah, two yeah. year old with blue hair. That's right. There. And then they just go, you know, that's what they told me. Well, he crossed the line. No one told me there was a line. Across the line. No one told you where the fucking line was, did they? Uh, <laughs> was the they didn't tell you there was a line. And secondly, when you did find out where the line was, it was inside the mind of the person who was offended. <laughs> of an individual. Hmm. Hmm. Right? A nebulous world space of, of, of nothing, right? <laughs> Well, that's what happens now, though, isn't it? Only it says they always quote one person was offended. It's like I was looking at an article today, and they say in Morecambe, the the camper vans on the beach are causing terrible distress to one person. (laughs) (laughs) Do you know what I mean? In her own mind, because she's going, "Oh, and I I used to be able to look out of my window and think, well, what's stopping you? You know." And and these are the sort of things that they put in, and they they put it in as though it's a news article. I know. As though though we, you know, our survey suggests, and it's like some bloody nosy person (laughs) who's got an axe to grind, and all of a sudden they're the new communitarian leader, you know. They're the thought police. Well, this is why I don't watch it, you know, because I maybe I should so I can learn to fucking control myself because I'll go fucking... Because it's, it's, it's ludicrous. It is. It's a clown show. It's like watching a... That's what I mean. Maybe we have to go, go on the side of, well, maybe it'll become so fucking ludicrous that lots of people... Well, it already do. is, really, isn't oh, it's, it? Because, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it is... It's, it's ridiculous, you know. Well, it's good comedy material, though. It is well, good comedy yeah. material if people get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's not comedy I, unless they get it, is it? That's the problem. I never thought I'd come to the day where, where the English <laughs> would stop laughing at good jokes. And it's come to that fucking time, like where, it yeah. bloody ass, mate. It How did the English me. get fucking comedy fucking programmed out of them? The English, yeah, I'm like, what? yeah I know, I know. <laughs> it's um, it's happened quick, hasn't it? It really has oh, happened quick. Mate, it happened. Well, it happened slow at first because I was doing what anti PC stuff. Yeah. twelve years ago, people watching my yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. And so, because it was, you know. Oh, you're like a prophet. No, it was like a red flag, wasn't it? Obvious? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, how did you know this was going to happen? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they kept doing stupid things like saying, I remember one of my old jokes, they were saying there's not enough rambling facilities for people in wheelchairs around the countryside of England. You know, obviously, yeah. they call hiking rambling in, in, in England if you're listening for yeah. another country that says hiking, but but. But this was in what early 2000, 2005 or something like that, mid two thousands. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? I know, but it's also set up the whole countryside now, so that every once in a blue moon, someone in a wheelchair who who feels who you want to victimise now. Have you ever thought that people in wheelchairs have come to the understanding that rambling is out for me now? <laughs> That's right. I know. Like, 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 like. like this is how humans function. Well, I used to surf, but a, a shark bit my leg off. Uh, That's I survived. Right. So- but surfing's out for me now. Right, right. Why? Well, this is the reality of my fucking situation. Like, like. Yeah, it's about not facing reality. Yes, but, but or, everything, and everything's all, about pandering to every little thing. But at the base of all this, uh, it's weaponizing stuff. people. It's turning them into biological weapons, basically, and also it can be used about whenever it, necessary. Yeah, their ultimate, their ultimate thing in PC is what no one should suffer, right? Which psychologically mm-hmm. connects to like the medical system. Why pain should not be accepted on any level, right? Painkillers, drugs, rah, rah, rah. It's the same psychology. That's what PC is. No pain. No one should have to come to a comedy show or see a film or read a book or have something that encroaches on their interior emotional world space so that they have to suffer. And yeah, of course, I mean, uh, and of course, but- and of course, everybody falls for this. Why? Because who wants to see people suffer? 
only psychopaths. And that, the irony being the people who are implementing these ideas to you. They don't mind seeing you suffer. <laughs> well, it's psychological warfare, basically. That's all it is. Totally well, right. Another one's good. Have you, have you noticed how camping became wild camping? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, what, what there's lions and tigers out there and all that. And it's, it's like, no, you're just setting a tent up in a field, but it's wild camping now. Like, do you go wild camping? And they get these people with camper vans and they go, oh, I don't know why people go wild camping. So why did you buy a bloody camper van when you're going to sit in a car park by a Mate. pub, you know? It's so true. Well, they, 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 you know, you don't have accidents anymore. You have incidents. Oh, yeah. They have to close the area off because it's been an incident. Not an accident because, you know, mm. accidents happen. That used to be the saying. You know? Yes. But now accidents can't be happening. Right. No, it has to be an incident. Or suffering and pain. Right. So, so also now we've got to, we've got to, we've got to uh, emotionalize it into an incident. Why? Because that that ties into yourself, the safety and the and the and the the, the medicine and area, and the incident's got to be dealt with. Why? So you don't suffer. So that's yes, all I mean, that under this well, illusion, that's the whole point, which is, it's which is the opposite. Sterile, yeah. which is which every dystopian mm -hmm. film has has always been its point. You'll well, that's fall right. In, you'll fall into this emotionless, drab, surface level, non-suffering. Everything directed to you, you know. Thank you for your cooperation. Yes, Brave you even World. see it in like those alien films. I watched that alien film the other day, and they, they say which that. one? The first one. No, it was the because uh... there's been a franchise of those. Yeah, well, there's yeah, yeah, the, the the fourth one, right? And so, which is kind of creepy. And then, uh... well, it's meant to be, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, totally. totally. <laughs> yeah. But in the in the sense of that, it's more realistic than people understand. Right. Yeah, yeah, and so. But, you know, it's, it's a great thing in that, that the, the voices are always the same. Like, so there's aliens running around everywhere and everyone's got to evacuate. But, of course, the voice over the loudspeaker is like, there is an alien now on level four, seven, 12, 27. Please make your way towards the escape pods. Thank you for your cooperation. Right. See, see, everything's oh yeah, everything's yeah so all yeah. perfect while everything's in absolute chaos, right? And that... That psychology, that that AI kind of emotionless, see it, say it, sorted. That's it. That's, Mind that's the, gap. the same yeah. thing, but they've just haven't quite taken the emotionless now, uh, uh, the emotion out of that. The see it, say it, sort it. Yeah, we still, we still, but it, it's the same thing. Even on a plane, they do this and do that. Thank you for your cooperation. See, I didn't say I was going to give you my cooperation, right? but you've already thanked me for it in a in a sort of. There you go. Just be passive. Yeah. We've well, it's it like, all sorted. But... <laughs> but that's the thing. It's like it, it, in the, when you get on a plane, when they do the life jacket thing, nobody looks at that, do they? Nobody looks at it. So nobody would know where anything was if they had to do it. Nah, well, as soon know, as they put that on. <laughs> I think most people really realise that if this plane starts hurtling towards the ground at 8,000 miles an hour, they're not going to be it. in that karma state. To a... No. No, you've got to put yourself in the brace position, you see. You're not getting... Get... <laughs> To get into brace position, <laughs> like that's going to do any good. You know? <laughs> when it, yeah, when the, when the captain you probably brace. find out that the brace position is designed away, so your neck snaps immediately, and you don't have to fucking stay. That's right, it kills you instantly. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, it's painless. But, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because you don't want to be lying on the ground with a seven four seven on your leg. <laughs> not, at all, not at all. No, no. hundred degree burns across your face. It's really hard to crash them, though. Something really has to go wrong with the plane. Because once they're up there, they're just floating. They're just floating, really. But needless to say, getting back to the point, is, yeah, everything's everything's for safety and safety and wash your hands. And they tell you, they, they started in Australia. They started in all countries. They had signs up in Australia, you know, um, watch out people about. This was also another one they used to, to start to make sure that car drivers now had to watch out for pedestrians. Do you have ones with kangaroos on over there by the road in case, you know, like... Oh, we've always had them. That's that's quite yeah, smart. Yeah. Mm, but actually, mm, you know, I see what they've done in Australia. Yeah. See, Australia yeah. used to have a... If you're in the bush, driving through the bush, you know, those long drives, then then all the speed signs or the road signs would be a kind of ochre brown, mm. right, which kind of fed into the background, right? But now, this is how much cash and time they got and how much they... Now they've changed them all to that luminous green that you get on those jackets, health and safety jackets. Mm. Right, so they've gone across a continent as big as Australia. 
and pulled all the fucking old ones out and replaced them. That's how much cash and fucking time these people have got, mate. Now, much oh, yeah. Do. They're yeah, into doing it, right? I mean, they're, we're talking 10, 12 hour drives, mate. They've gone down these fucking <laughs> it's global to local, thousand though, kilometer it? roads and fucking yeah. changed them all. You get yeah. through the countryside, not even the highways, through the countryside in Australia. We go on some back road out in Queensland that changed mm. to this incident color that everyone has to have a health and safety jacket on, the same, that luminous green, you know. And now you have to have a, now everyone hasn't, they've slowly, you're in England, right? There's a, there's a security guard at Tesco. <laughs> oh yeah, well, they've had yeah, them braces though, haven't they? Right? Yeah, yeah. So, so now why is there a why is there a bouncer at Tesco? And... <laughs> yeah, I know, but uh, that was pretty problematic with the COVID thing, wasn't it? You know, you'd have to wait till he turns his back if you haven't got a mask on, you know, and just run in. And also, and you know, then... I said on this, and, and also, yeah, when you used to see some geezers who were bouncers, you know. They had big long black jackets on and that looked like geezers, didn't they? Right, you know, humans. You still talk to them. They might be fucking cheeky, but you know. But now they all look with the with the health and safety, and the health, now they all look a bit militarized. Well, you know what I mean? because I had a very weird these, experience jackets with clear with yeah. name tags and these things and these whatnot and these and they and they pull on like like bulletproof jackets, like cop jackets. They pull on us, so and now now it doesn't look friendly to go in there because it looks like there's actual security. On the door, right? Not oh, some yeah. gates. Yeah. yeah. Well, they have uh, the metal detectors on a lot of places now, don't they? I remember I went down to, I've been into uh, Weatherspoons in Camden. You know, Camden Lock, I've been the weather spoons there. I went there for a, a brunch. I met a few people there. Went back there to meet a friend in the evening at seven o'clock. The bouncer says, Have you got ID? I said, I'm 55. <laughs> <laughs> he said, No, nah, mate, you're not coming in. You got and ID. They wouldn't let us in. <laughs> I've got ID. I mean, but yeah. I know, but why do you I've need got, ID? I mean, I'm clearly over 21. Do you I've, know what I mean? I've got I've got Come hemorrhoids, on. mate. I've got hemorrhoids. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's just bloody unbelievable, really, that, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's what it does is it takes people's discrimination away. You see, there's no discrimination. There's no yeah, positive discrimination. It's all negative discrimination, isn't it? It's like you, you, you can't get anywhere now on the phone. No one will actually reason with you at all. That, it's that. some it's some idiot saying that they actually blocked me from making a payment to my own lawyer through my own bank. <laughs> and, and, it, and then the, 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 it went to the fraud squad. And the fraud squad phoned me up and says, what happened? And I said, I was trying to make a payment and I got a digit wrong. They go, what? What? <laughs> and I said, yes, that's all that happened. And they blocked me. For, they said I had to go back to my branch. I said, I haven't got a branch. You closed it down seven years ago. <laughs> and then they said, no, you've, you've got to go to your nearest branch in the UK. I said, I'm in Greece. <laughs> and they said, oh, there's nothing we can do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little thing we can do. <laughs> it's out of our hands, you know. Can't, yeah, yeah. can't help you. So you've set a whole system up to be done through this system, but there's nothing you can do within this system. Is that what you? <laughs> well, no, it's just the um, unbelievable. You know, I mean, well, you know, quite, it's, that's it's, the scary it's, thing. It's a world I won't be able to function in. You know, yeah. I, I was booking. I was in a, on tour, and I went to a hotel, and then I said, "Oh, we've got two rooms booked," and then she came up with only one, and maybe the, 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 and they were booked under separate names or something. I thought they wouldn't be. And she's going, no, there's only one. And I said, okay, well, maybe there's been a mistake. Could I book another room? She goes, well, you'll have to do it by computer. But oh, I'm there. You have to do it online, yeah. yeah. I'm there in yeah. front of her. So, so, so I won't be able to function in a world like that. I'll just get, I'll have to leave and go somewhere else. <laughs> oh, it's, it's terrible, though, isn't it? Yeah, I, mean, I just I, I don't have happened to me during before. COVID. I, was, I got to an airport. And um, I booked a hotel. You know, you said, oh, you have to book a hotel. Then he got, no, you have to book a government hotel. And it was about 20 minutes before the bloody gates, you know, closing. And they go, yeah, just get online and do it. And it's like, you can't. You can't do it, you know. That would be, yeah, it's no good. It's no good. Got to go no, back it to won't be for me. I can't, paper. Even, I can't even use computers. So if someone said get online and do it, I said, I don't know how to get online. I don't, you know, my phone won't fi fix itself. It's old and battered and I'm not. I just yeah, won't go. I'll just have to leave the airport. See you. <laughs> To go to a country that's um, a bit more behind the times, you see. <laughs> a country where they have horses and carts and stuff like that, and really old cars from the 70s and 80s. Yeah, cool ones. Yeah. yeah, yeah, cool ones, and also ones you can get the bits for, and there's no electronics in them at all, you know. That's another one I noticed years ago. Mm -hmm. see, I, see, I look into it, there's all, you know, there's all psychological, even aesthetics they create to, 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 to ease everybody into this. It's like, like mm -hmm. that's been 15, 20 years ago, I was in Amsterdam or somewhere. Walking around at night, smoking weed, just, you know, 
that's when I noticed all the cars are the same. Yeah. And then I started to realize that, yeah, look, they've turned them all the same. But it's like phones, isn't it? They're all the same. Right. It, so, it's a... <laughs> yeah. it's not, nothing's got any style. Everything's like oh. the same thing. It used to be cool cars in Australia in the 70s and the 80s. Oh, yeah. American yeah. muscle yeah. cars, you know. Yeah. Little cheeky European things. And... Mm. But now they're, they're just kind of uh, hatchbacks, aren't they? That sleek, oh, yeah. That kind of sleek, aerodynamic shape, and that's it. I love the uh, sports cars, also known as death traps, you know. They were great, weren't they? Sports cars. <laughs> you know, very sleek, nice and small, you know, and sort of great. You know, bucket seats in them, you know. And you sold them to people who could afford tons of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> No, it wasn't like that in them days. People just used to drink and drive all the time, didn't they? <laughs> yes. In the yeah. good old days. Because who bought sports cars? Well, fancy celebrities and rock stars and stuff. Yeah. No, it wasn't like that in the 70s in England. A lot of people had them. Oh, all right. Do them up. Yeah, yeah. Little Triumph Stags and all that. Yeah, my family were all into all that stuff. Yeah, but um, they used to have record players in the cars, you know, Steve. It was very high tech. Can you imagine that, trying to put a record on? <laughs> <laughs> fucking 80 miles an hour. You know? <laughs> no wonder there's so, so many accidents. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That, <laughs> that you can keep to history. I'll stick with the CD player in the car. No, eight tracks were better. Eight they tracks were better. Even... They never jumped, did they? And they kept playing continuous CDs are crap. Eight tracks were fantastic. Well, I see, I, I was, I'm too young to be the eight track days. Oh, they were great. I they were continuous the, play. I mean, on the vinyl cassette era. Quadraphonic as well. Do you remember Quadraphonic? It didn't really last because they couldn't make um, the records for it. You know, it was, it, it was too expensive. Well, all I remember is in the Fantastic. 80s, you, your mates would call you around to their house to show off their massive speakers and huge stereo. That it's, oh, uh, yeah. Love all that. Love, love a bit of hi-fi. Yeah. Now everybody's listening to music through a fucking earbud or a yeah. speaker. This is shocking. Yeah. Yeah, my family, did, so when I had um, AR6 speakers that had been handmade and they were they had little bits cut out of the cones, you know, to balance them on each side. And they had to be the, exactly the right distance, you know. Oh, and it was in the front room. Do you remember, did you ever have a front room where you were never allowed to go as a kid? <laughs> never, you know, and no one ever used it. It was like a front room, but it was like, it was out of bounds. You couldn't go in. Yeah. <laughs> They were very big in England. You know, it's like it was just like a thing, like you'd have a front room. It was more to show people. So you'd have everything set up and it'd have a Chesterfield in, you know, a nice little antique coffee table. But no one was allowed in. I had a white carpet, that sort of thing, you know. Uh, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, anyway, how I long think, have we done? I don't know. We've done um, bloody hell, gone in nearly an hour. All right. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's flying over. It's okay. Yeah. Well, I, might, I might wrap it up now. This has been fun. We should do this again. We should do anytime, mate, because we're getting I'm into my, a bit of a. I'm in, my bit, buddy, a bit, I'm in my buddy's bedroom. Oh, right. Okay, then. So it's a, it, it just looked like a nice set, though, doesn't it? It's just like a nice oh, yeah, set. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. usually I'm on a bed on an iPad with the thing facing down with a yeah. blank white wall. So we set this up to a. Yeah, it's got a bit of a blankety blank kind of feel about it. <laughs> it's just like, I think it's the colours, you know. Yeah. No, it's right. great, Steve. Yeah, fantastic. Well, 57 minutes. Yeah, I usually do an hour, actually. So that's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's loads of things we can talk about. Anytime. Fantastic. Right, no worries. I hope you enjoyed it out there. I haven't had time yeah, to yeah. look at most of the comments because we were just <laughs> freestyling. They call it freestyling, don't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were just having probably nothing. You know, probably nothing a lot of people who would listen to this channel don't know already. But just a conversation. Yeah, we, we, all the information is at windowsontheworld.net. I do a show every Sunday, 9.30 p.m., as most people know. And um, we are a bit shadow banned on here. So tell your friends and amuse your enemies. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right, Steve. Yeah, no thanks worries, a lot, mate. mate. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. See you in a bit. See you later, people. Good night, everybody. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Bye. 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 Bye.